Hello and welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, I'm an emergency physician, and today's topic is going to be acute closed angle glaucoma. This is a vision threatening emergency. And of all the non traumatic conditions in ophthalmology that you need to know, this is number one. Now, to start off, I'm actually going to play a video thanks to Open dot osmosis dot org on Wikipedia and this will look at the difference between closed angle and open angle glaucoma and offers give us a little bit of review of the anatomy. Okay, I'll see you after the uh, video is completed. Glaucoma is actually a group of eye diseases that are usually due to intraocular hypertension or increased pressure in the eye which damages the optic nerve and, if left untreated, can lead to blindness. Taking a closer look at this cross-section of the eye, you can see that it's split up into different chambers. The anterior chamber includes the area from the cornea to the iris. The posterior chamber is this really narrow space between the iris and the lens. And then this larger vitreous chamber includes the space between the lens and the back of the eye. Not to be too confusing, but both the anterior and posterior chambers are located within the anterior section of the eye, while the vitreous chamber is part of the posterior section of the eye. Typically, each of these chambers is filled with fluid. The chambers in the anterior section are filled with a liquid called aqueous humor, and the posterior section is filled with vitreous humor. The aqueous humor is a transparent, watery fluid that's secreted by the ciliary epithelium which, in addition to secreting aqueous humor and providing nutrients to the lens and cornea, it provides structural support and helps to keep the shape of the eye. So that fluid secreted into the posterior chamber, and then flows through a narrow space between the front of the lens and the back of the iris, through the pupil to the anterior chamber. From there, the fluid flows out of the eye through the trabecular meshwork, which is a spongy tissue that acts like a drain. And this allows the fluid to go down into a circular channel called the canal of Schlem and finally into the aqueous veins, which are part of the episcleral venous system, the veins around the sclera of the eye. In glaucoma, part of this aqueous humor drainage pathway becomes partially or completely blocked, for example by trapped red blood cells or white blood cells, so that fluid can't easily drain out. This causes the pressure within the fixed space of the anterior chamber to quickly build up, causing intraocular hypertension which is defined as pressure greater than 21 millimeters of mercury, or 2.8 kilopascals. This high pressure affects all the structures of the eye, including the optic nerve, which is the nerve that carries visual information from the eyes to the brain. And this means that over time, as the optic nerve gets damaged, glaucoma leads to vision loss. Now, there are a couple types of glaucoma. First, there's open angle glaucoma which is actually the most common and it has this name because the angle between the cornea and the iris is open. In this type, the drainage system slowly gets clogged over time, and so there's this gradual increase in pressure on the optic nerve. This increase in pressure initially results in atrophy of the outer rim of the nerve, resulting in a decrease in peripheral vision. As that pressure increases even more though, there's continued damage to the optic nerve, which eventually leads to a loss in central vision as well. Another type of glaucoma is closed angle glaucoma, also known as angle closure glaucoma or narrow angle glaucoma. And this is due to the angle between the iris and the cornea being too small, meaning that the passageway for aqueous humor outflow is too narrow, and this is as a result of the lens being pushed against the iris. The result of this is that the drainage system gets blocked again, but this time causes a rapid buildup of pressure within the eye. Okay, so how do these acute closed angle glaucoma patients present to the emergency department? Well, it may have been precipitated by going from light into dark, like if they went from the outside into a movie theater. With darkness, the pupil will dilate and the iris therefore will will become shorter and thicker, and this can close off the angle and precipitate a sudden increase in pressure, uh, which in turn can put more pressure on, op on the um, optic nerve and can cause uh, ischemia of the optic nerve and potentially irreversible visual loss. 
So they get sudden pain in the eye, in the headache, they get photophobia, they can get overwhelming nausea and come in vomiting and they can look dreadful. So often when they get here to the emergency department, they get given a CAT2 and get seen fairly quickly. Once you look at the eye, you can see that there's decreased visual acuity. This is mainly because, well one of the reasons is because the, the uh, cornea is cloudy. It's cloudy because the aqueous humour, the fluid has been pushed into the actual cornea and this can make it cloudy. It's a red eye, especially around the limbus, which is this area here. So red, cloudy cornea, the pupil about mid position, mid dilated, and it can be a little bit irregular. Now if you do an examination, apart from the visual acuity and looking at the eye, you can actually physically push over that eye very gently and it often will be rock hard because of the high pressure. You can compare it to your own eye, which should be normal pressure. So we suspect it, we've done the examination, and so now a treatment. If it's me, of course, I would want some IV fentanyl fairly quickly and some on Dancitron, four to eight milligrams IV. You can put some IV fluids up and, and what you need to do is get something to constrict the pupil. So you need a myotic, something like pilocarpine 2%. Now this pilocarpine 2% will mean that as the pupil is constricted, that means the iris becomes prolonged, lengthened and thins out and opens up that closed angle. Give about one to two drops every 15 minutes into the affected eye until you get effective meiosis. Whilst you're waiting to get that together, you can actually physically massage the, the eye very carefully and this can promote a little bit of fluid movement through the trabeculae. Okay, so you've given the myotic and the analgesia and the antiemetic, you've set them up, um, and now you want to give a diuretic. You give it carbonic anhydrase inhibitor like acetazolamide or, or diamox. We would give it IV, which is 500 milligrams intravenously. Now, it's surprising to have a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, but there's a lot of carbonic anhydrase um, in the eye, which is just waiting to be inhibited. Now, well before this time, when you suspected and started the treatment, you should speak to your ophthalmology registrar or consultant. This is an eye emergency. And they can help guide therapy because it may be that if it's not improving after half an hour or to an hour, they're likely to be coming in, but they might ask to give some mannitol as another diuretic at one gram per kilo IV. Now this should show an improvement in the pain, uh, there should be less redness to the eye, the, the uh, cornea shouldn't be as clouded. Definitively, it's actually to do an iridectomy, a peripheral iridectomy. This is a pretty big one we're seeing here. And that allows drainage uh, through the trabecular between, so that the um, iris doesn't compress on the lens and block the area. Okay, so we've identified the acute closed angle glaucoma when they've come in. Uh, we've referred appropriately and we've done appropriate treatment. Hmm. I reckon that'll just about do for acute closed angle glaucoma in one coffee. Okay, I'll see you soon. Cheers.